I don't know. Let's see where the camera's going. Stop. I'm going to go put it. There you go. Oh, wait. One second. Back to one. Okay. Okay. Pull me out. Let's pull up for the photograph. Come back in. Pull up, guys. Let's get ready. Pull me out. Yeah, come on in. There you go. Go, go ahead. Position. Go position now. I'm going to take the opportunity to pull up, everyone. Get him in now. Get in position. Get in position. Here we go. Do the handshake okay. now, guys. Nice. Okay, now handshake. There you go. That's it. That's it. Nice. Okay. Right. That might be too much of a real event. I think so. Where she sees me. And it's a quick transition to get from the scene to that scene so quickly. Because I take your hand in the very next scene. Right. So, like, I probably already kind of like it. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Like, like, yeah. Yeah. Like, I already had that one for the audience to see it as well. Yeah. yeah. I'm just having my boss come around right now. Exactly. <laughs> This. Yes, yeah. this is the one that's over. Yes. So, yes. yes, so far, and what we can do is do three layers. Two, one, and then two, the other, all. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Let's see. I'm going to check out the cut from, uh, mm -hmm. from Molly's scene where she says, the first scene. I got, I know, I know, going, she's going to Washington, I know, you're saying. That that then Bill can talk to you. Yes. Yeah. Bring can you bring your stuff in or something? Yeah. yeah. Sure. I'll grab I'll grab your back. Cool. Now look, I'm gonna lay this up kind of and then we're gonna move it according to the drone. The whole unit. You know? Alright. So, uh, okay, I'll, like you need here. You need help. help. The gov represents Mr. Hale. Action. I told her. I told her you do it yourself. And she said, I don't want to do it myself. I said, you're going to have to. How you do, Mr. Hale? Well, well, well. well. Sorry to bother you. My name's Tom White. I'm an agent in charge for the Bureau of Investigation. Yeah. The Osage were considered incompetent at that time and weren't allowed to be in charge of their own wealth. And by getting a caretaker like Ernest as her husband, they became an independent unit. They were able to take care of one another. So it was somewhat advantageous in some respects for her. For him, he obviously, you know, had genuine feelings for her, but realized that there was tremendous wealth in the family. The complexity of how that relationship unfolded is shown in the movie in a very interesting way. And we, we played with how much we wanted to show the audience as far as Ernest's complicity in some of these murders. And... Uh, there were many different versions of this script. One of them was exposing everything from the onset. A lot of it was, you know, a slow reveal, but I think mm, Scorsese masterfully has this sort of slow burn with understanding the manipulation from his uncle, and he gets further and further and deeper and deeper down this well 
of, of atrocious acts. I felt a tremendous responsibility in telling this story correctly. Uh, we've, we wanted to be as authentic as possible, and that led us to have many different meetings with tribal elders in the Osage community, talking with direct descendants of, of the victims, their great-grandchildren, a lot of them who we worked with in the film, who worked on the film with us in various different departments. And they really gave us an incredible insight into a story that they have been sort of suppressing to the outside world and have, have kept insular in their community because it was so incredibly traumatizing. And, it was, and it's still a, a raw nerve to them. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a generational, the effects of the Osage Reign of Terror has, has been generational and it still exists today there in Oklahoma. I felt her at moments living as Molly. Um, she embodied that character. She took on the soul of this woman and embraced herself into the Osage community, once again, being from a different tribe, going to the Osage community, listening to that story, speaking to her direct descendants, and um, just embodied in, in every moral fiber of her being uh, who Molly was and, and, and expressed it through her performance in a very profound way. She's the heart and soul of this movie. She really is. When we meet Molly Kyle, we meet her in the context of being with her family, being a loving sister, being a doting, um, dutiful, loving daughter. Um, Molly, being somebody who's described as easy to like, then in a way, fatefully, and in a way, um, intentionally, meets Ernest Burkhart, who is under her employ as her driver. And through one lens, you see a very organic attraction forming. And through another lens that Molly is pretty unaware of, you see a calculated um, arrangement happening. William Hale being Ernest Burkhart's uncle is kind of a de facto father figure to a man who's returning from war, who doesn't have a whole lot of skills to offer, doesn't have prospects at much work, plants the idea of, well, being being married to an Osage person, that's, there's good money in that. The first day that I worked with him, my hands were shaking naturally because it's Leonardo DiCaprio. But after getting through those initial nerves, I, um, I was just sitting across from an incredibly present, generous, talented, immensely talented actor. And the rest of, um, the rest of the nerves about it faded away when we were just so focused on if we were doing justice to our characters. So that was, that was incredibly inspiring. After having been relocated and removed from their ancestral homelands to Oklahoma, the reservation they have now, they also purchased it because they knew that was a language that the government would understand. And in doing so, they also had the keen insight to secure the surface mineral rights. So after having been in their new homelands um, for a pretty short amount of time, just a couple decades, then oil was struck. And overnight, it made Osage, at the time in, in, in American history, at that time in the world, the richest people per capita anywhere. Now, as part of a family with several valuable shares, they called it headrights, of oil profits and lots of land they had. So Ernest was, you know, probably encouraged to marry her by his uncle in order to get her family's... Um, head rights, which gave him access to and control over her shares in the oil profits. But I think Ernest is also attracted to the Osage world in which Molly is a member. He becomes very fascinated by their culture, he even learns the language. 
I, I got to say, in this picture, he really went pretty far and astonished me. I mean, he had it. His depth of vulnerability, um, again, many different layers and shades and tones to earnest that um, um, we just developed as we went along and still amazes me.